All right. So we've shown you guys uh, camera configuration, the recording setup. Now we're going to show you guys uh, a little bit of uh, advanced stuff on the cameras, uh, mainly motion detection setup. So for motion detection, um, NX Witness probably does the uh, single best job in the world in terms of like uh, tracking and using motion detection information that comes from cameras or is done on the server side. So for cameras that support motion detection inside the camera, uh, then we can use uh, camera motion detection inside the camera. So how do we get to the motion detection sections? All right, so first thing we do is we select a camera. In this case, I'm gonna select the uh, kitchen in our office demo system. And then I go to uh, motion underneath the camera settings. And you can see right now, the entire screen is selected um, for uh, motion, right? Um, and it's all set at a sensitivity of five. And motion is best applied generally to specific things. You can see in this image right now, I'm getting some motion going on back here um, outside our office window, which is unrelated to the actual office environment. And therefore, it's not really useful. And I'm just going to be recording all the time and tracking that motion information. What I want to do is kind of focus on the areas of um, the view that I really want to uh, get motion detection information from. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just highlight the two doors in the kitchen because those are the things I'm concerned about. One that comes from the outside patio and the other one comes from inside the office. And I just want to see who comes in and out of those doors. Right? So I highlight those areas. You'll notice that those are set to zero because my sensitivity right now is set to zero. But actually I want to make them a little bit more sensitive. So I'm going to make that six and that one's six. And then I'm going to change this to zero and I'm going to remove all other motion detection from the from the screen. So go ahead and press, press uh, apply and I'm good to go. Now one thing you'll notice is one of the main reasons for doing motion detection is um, saving storage, right? Because hard drives are expensive. So we want to maximize the amount of storage we have for the maximum amount of you know, effectiveness in our system uh, without overdoing it. And so right now this particular camera is set to record at 30 frames per second at high quality um, at uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, I mean, just for <laughs> uh, an estimate, I mean, this camera is probably going to record between one and two terabytes of data in a month, right, at least, um, just because it's a high-res camera. So I would like to get that down, right? And one of the ways to get it down is just to do motion. Um, so, so I'm going to do motion-only recording. Or if I'm, if I'm really worried about just having continuous recording all the time, but I don't want to use too much space, I can choose motion plus low-res always. So I'm going to always record a low resolution stream and then I'm going to record high resolution every time there's motion in those two areas that I just set. Right. So let's do that. So 30 frames per second motion plus low res always. Now, one thing for motion recording you need to pay attention to is the pre recording and post recording um, settings. So basically what that does is before the event occurs, um, I want to record a, uh, five seconds of high res and then after the event has ended when the motion has stopped I still want to record five seconds afterwards as well right and that makes it easier just to see what actually happened in the event that there is motion in the area so you can you can adjust this um, but for, for most people they just leave it at five seconds because five seconds is plenty of time before and after an event but again adjustable if you need it so go ahead and press apply and click OK and just to check um, so now that that recording has begun on that device, right? So now it's only going to record um, every time there's motion in those two areas, which is great. Um, you can see right now we always have a buffer. And you can see previously it was always continuous. We always have this buffer because we store uh, the last minute in, in, uh, in RAM, right? We keep, we keep it in our buffer because that way we can do things like post recording and pre recording. And we're always recording that, you know, full high res stream during that time period. But as soon as uh, that minute is up, then we can get rid of that video, right? So that's a real quick and dirty and easy way to set up motion recording. Uh, you can do it on every single one of your cameras. It'll save you a ton of space, save you a ton of hard drives, and as a result, it'll save you a lot of cost. Um, there's another benefit um, called Smart Pixel Search, which we'll show you later on, which we use the motion data from cameras, and we can, you know, instantaneously. Um, pull back events from a certain por portion of the screen 
um, which is a really powerful feature, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So that's uh, motion recording setup.